All right, excuse the sound in the background, it's the ultrasonic cleaner. Let's get straight on with part three of this work then. Um, I'm actually going to do what I said I would in the last video, which is sort out these. They're little elbows with O-rings that are very common leak points on the Pan-European. And I believe one of these is cracked because uh, before I started blasting this out with cleaner and stuff, there was a trace of coolant down here and I think I can see right about here that it's cracked. So, I'm going to try not to get in your way. And we're going to start cracking these nuts loose. There's one on each side, one for each bank. And what usually leaks is the O-rings, but it can also be cracks. So we'll sort it out one way or another. Just going to go and grab a socket for these, which I think are going to be... I think there were six yesterday, which was quite odd. Um, and the new parts are on the shelf behind me, so let's have a quick look at what state these are in. That's a lot of corrosion. I'm going to guess this bolt is shorter. We'll have a long one and a short one for each side. I wouldn't expect this one to be as corroded either because it doesn't have a long shank. Nope, it is shorter. And that is not what you want to see. We'll talk about this in a second. Yep, these were a six. Which is just super weird. I expected them to be a seven. Let's see if we can break this off by hand. Yep. Yeah, so let's have a chat about this. At first sight, this looks like aluminium corrosion, but if it was, it would be taking up this entire inside here. And there is some. My theory is, this is the rad weld that the previous owner put in the bike. And this might well be why it went off the road, because that's going to cause some serious overheating and long-term damage. And the reason I think it's the rad weld is because it's mushy and it's still wet. It's not um, aluminium corrosion texture. And if you smell it, it has a kind of silicony chemical kind of smell. See if the other side's the same. So that's the other side and not as bad but still yuck and looking at this out in the sunlight it's definitely not your regular aluminium corrosion. That's what Radweld does so please for the love of god do not put Radweld in cars, bikes or anything you care about unless you're immediately going to sell it and um, don't care about the person who buys it. I'm going to go and grab a hose. We'll see if we can get some water flowing through this block because my nightmare at the moment is that quite possibly this entire top end is stuffed full of this stuff. We'll see. Right, I've got an air hose on the bottom radiator hose. Let's, um, well, you know what's going to happen. I've got some coming out of one side. That's the better side. Um, I've soaked my ratchet, so that's going to need to go in an oil bath. And I think we need to dig out where are you gone look at that disgusting stuff don't actually know the size or pattern of these heads so I don't know how small the passages get or where they go the bike is puking down on the floor I think these <laughs> just go up to the thermostat. Let's uh, it's pretty nasty down there, and it's still caked all over the walls. I'm going to go see a uh, quick 
internet search, see if there's anything that dissolves this stuff that we might be able to stick down there. Although, I'm not feeling hopeful. We might just have to run it and flush the coolant over and over and over and over again. Um, and figure out where the original leak was. I've had a couple of hypotheses, but um, at this point, <laughs> I'm not feeling good. Okay, so I've sent the boroscope down. I will put that footage in now. The good news is that this crud doesn't go all the way down into the engine. It's only up in these top sections, so once you get down these ports, everything's fairly clear. So I'm going to guess that this was the point in the engine where it got hot and then cooled quickest, because it's a metal piece going into rubber pipes. And so I expect that means that's where the um, rad weldy type stuff has solidified. I've also sent the boroscope down into the side of the engine all the way to the back of the water pump and that's clear so I think what we'll have to do is um, get some coolant flush in there, run it for a bit, dump it, run it for a bit, dump it, make sure we don't get any overheating or localised heating when we do get the engine running. For the time being I'm just going to uh, get this pipe out of the way maybe and uh, clean up this face here. Okay, we've got the new bits and new O-rings to go with them. Just going to give it a dab of grease to hold that O-ring in. Push that in like so. Grease is going to help it not to pinch as it goes in as well, not that these things tend to, but... Just going to clean that bolt up very briefly. Check out the door and run away in our absence. And just popped a tiny bit of ACF 50 on these. Mostly just to act as a bit of corrosion protection. Okay, one down, other side's exactly the same. Just going to clean out this pipe first and get that on there. Uh, for 25 quid to do both of these and the O rings, I think it's uh, worthwhile insurance. Although, to be fair, the reason that people complain about doing these is because it's so difficult to get the carbs off. I don't really think it is, but each to their own. Okay, crud all cleared out. Um, yes, I'm going to regret not replacing these hose clamps. Yes, I should be replacing the hoses. But remember, this is not that kind of... Uh, you know, there's a reason that this is a recommission, not a rebuild. I'm trying to save a couple of quid everywhere I can. Because, like I say, if you can get a decent one of these for about two grand, I don't want to spend... 1500 quid sorting out one with a questionable history and bigger problems. Not worth it to me. It's also not worth it to me to fully restore it. This isn't actually a UK registered bike. It was, well, it was registered new at import. It was brought in from abroad for some reason or another. Possibly uh, military possibly something else, don't know, but um, yeah, if I was going to do this I'd want to start with a, a UK bike for insurance reasons anyway. Right, that's all back together. Just going to fish this pipe under here because I completely forgot. Excuse the ultrasonic cleaner, but we've also got some new carb boots on now as well. Alright, so things escalated. I couldn't leave this thermostat housing A looking this crusty and B, given what I've just seen, I thought I'd pop it out. It normally lives up here. And I have a new thermostat for it as well, so I'm going to give it a quick bath, probably in the ultrasonic cleaner. It's good that I took it off, because it turns out it does have a broken hose on it. And um, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll get that in there, get the rubber bits off, take the sensor out, get it cleaned up, get the thermostat changed and chuck it back in again. And then, apart from the radiator itself, that's most of the cooling system that I can get to. So I'll go do that now, and uh, when it comes back, hopefully it should be clean. Mm -hmm. 
Thought I'd be smart and took a chance buying some O-rings from Amazon to save a couple of quid on shipping fees from David Silver. Turns out I need a few more bits anyway, so I'll make that order. But, um, yeah. Amazon has turned to complete trash. This O-ring is perfectly measured, cross-referenced against a Honda part, but what I ordered is not what showed up. And I've measured all the O-rings in the pack, um, and they're not the uh, size that they are supposed to be that I ordered. They're all varying sizes, so they'll be getting sent back, and I'll be doing what I should have done in the first place. In the meantime, let's go find something else to do. Okay, another small job trying to save a couple of quid here. These are the clamps that hold the carburetor boots on. I've managed to get six of the eight that there are. There are two on each uh, boot undone. One I had to drill out, and this is the last remaining one. Um, they've been in the ultrasonic cleaner for a couple of hours. Then they've soaked in evapor rust overnight. Most of the ones that were stuck just came apart after that, but there are a few with slightly chewed up heads. Um, and this is a good example of one of those. So I have tried this, but it's very hard to get these held in a way where it's not going to deform them by hitting them with that. So instead, I thought I'd show you um, the kind of last, well, my last resort method and one that usually works. I'm just going to put this up quite high in the vise and then uh, bring in the map gas torch. It's just a plumber's torch but it's very effective for this kind of stuff in the garage. And we'll just heat that up until this block at the back here goes cherry red, which is going to take a, a couple of moments. Um, then we are going to hit the bolt itself with some WD-40. The idea being this gets royally cherry red and hot and expands slightly. When we hit the bolt, it's going to contract slightly and hopefully the shock will let the threads come apart. And while it's still hot, we can get it moving and then we can leave it to cool down and... Um, finish it off later. I think if I get all these apart, I'll give them a, a treat with some more black and then we'll put them back on and all we've got to find hopefully is going to be one of these bolts, the one that I had to drill out, which is, um, yeah, not looking so healthy. Fair warning, if you do this, it's going to smoke out the workshop, garage, shed, wherever you're doing it. And just like that, completely stuck goes to unstuck. It's really fantastic how effective this is. But yeah, like I say, this smoke that comes off hangs in the air. For a long time, I had to turn off the smoke detector in the garage. But as you can see, that's now moving really freely. We'll just take it out most of the way so that we've got somewhere to grip onto when it all cools down. And I'm going to chuck that back in the um, ultrasonic basket to cool down where it can't do any one or anything any harm. Let's uh, have a quick go with the one that's got no head on it.
replumbed most of my house off a single bottle of that uh, map gas. So, well worth buying the um, the torch and a gas bottle. Now this is turning, but we're going to have to be a little bit careful here because I've gotten everything so hot that the clamp just wants to deform. Also just notice there's some corrosion on this thread here. Always helps to make sure the threads are as clean as possible. probably could be using something less awful than these uh, rusty jobs here, but we've got it turning. We'll probably be able to wind that out by hand when everything's cooled down. This will be a nice saving, because um, to get new re replacement, remanufactured ones of these is uh, seven quid each, and there's eight of them, so... doesn't sound financially like very much fun for clamps. In fact, actually thinking about it, that costs as much as the, um, as the thermostat, <laughs> which was a fairly expensive thermostat. But yeah, you get the idea. That's, that's a part now. It's a shame I couldn't have got this one off without having to drill it. But yeah, there you go. That's, um, some money saved and seven out of eight without any damage definitely worth it for a i don't know what was it 15 quid map gas the torch is the expensive part of those but um buy once cry once with those they're fairly universal everyone uses the same one it's a bit dear but it ignites first time every time um, and i've used it upside down hanging between floorboards in the dark and it's not let me down so yeah heat is your friend heat and a big wd-40 spray can Buy them from Costco. They're uh, cheapest there per mil. Cool, on to something else. All right, I've ceremonially set the carbs on here. Um, we need to get a replacement for that singular clamp, so that's also on the order to David Silver. Um, and in the meantime, I've popped these here to keep them out of the way. So I think that's going to make it it for this part. In the next part, maybe we'll see if we can get the cooling system at least functional enough to see if we've done a good job on these carbs. Maybe get the engine to run for a bit, get out to temperature. Make sure it definitely doesn't sound like a bag of spanners. Um, and then once we've done that, we can address the pieces of frame that need treating and rust neutralising. Maybe we can do a couple of heat cycles on this, do a coolant flush, see if we can get all of that stuff we found out before, see if any of the hoses explode. Um, and if all goes well from there, um, I think then we'll take a look at the front end we need to the forks and everything look fine although the seals could do with a really good clean before we actually make them move at all um, the bottom yoke needs replacing because it's completely rusted out and we've got uh, three calipers worth of brake jobs to do i think and an abs system to determine if it works or not so that should keep us busy see you in the next part <laughs>